time lock and we're going to look at Debian ORM and how it allows lazy loading beyond the initial context. Uh, so this works like Eclipse Link and unlike Hibernate. So Hibernate will throw the lazy initialization exception. And so this is going into uh, things we need to look at in terms of why eBean does this and, and what to look for. So lazy loading beyond the context um, has two perspectives we can look at. One is the database transaction perspective and the other one is the ORM perspective. So the main thing here is with the database transaction perspective, if we're running at read committed isolation level, which is the default and which is what you'll be using the vast majority of the time, um, then there is no real difference if we invoke a lazy loading query with either the original transaction or a new one. Um, there is a difference, however, at a higher isolation level. So if we're using a transaction isolation level of a serializable or repeatable read, then we do need to think about what we want to fetch eagerly versus lazily. Uh, at these higher isolation levels, if we were talking about Oracle, we'd say uh, we're talking about transaction level read consistency versus statement level read consistency. Um, so that might help. So let's have a look at an example. <coughs> okay, so here I've got a query on fetching the first 10 orders and I'm just going to iterate through the orders here and these methods here will effectively invoke lazy loading. So I'm reading the customer's name, uh, getting the size of the details and size of the shipments. So it will invoke some lazy loading and then we'll print this, um, the details out. So if we run that, <coughs> um, we get some, some orders. So we've got seven orders with some detail lines are here printed them out and then above that we've got our transactions so we've got one two three and four transactions and we've got our original query or our origin query if you like and then we've got some lazy loading queries for customer a lazy loading query for order details or something and a lazy loading for order shipments <coughs> Um, so the, the thing that's happening here with these lazy loading queries is eBean's going, well, we need to lazy load. I'll go get a uh, new transaction and I will do the lazy loading query and then I'll do a commit for the query only transaction. So that will tend to just do a rollback actually. Um, <coughs> and we've done that for the, the lazy loading. So. When we're running at read committed isolation level, for example, we're invoking this lazy loading query here, it's running as at this transaction start time. So it's, it's sort of running as at the start time here. Um, and that's a little bit different, and that's what we need to take into account if we're doing higher isolation levels. So let's, um, so let's now get a transaction at a higher isolation level, which is serializable. Um, and let's, oh, I guess we'll do this properly. Sort of properly, if I can type. So let's uh, end the transaction now. Let's uh, <coughs> get the orders. Now, um, what we're doing is we're we're running this transaction at at serializable. So here and now. Because I'm doing that, I'm going, well, I actually want to eagerly fetch some of the details. So let's let's uh, fetch, fetch the details and let's fetch the shipments. So let's run that now. So if we have a look, uh, we get the same result, um, seven orders, etc. And now we've got a transaction one which spans further down to here. And we've got query joins fetching the details and the shipments. And what that means is that when this query runs at that serializable, it will actually run as at the transaction start time. So if this transaction start time was, you know, many seconds earlier, then this query will see data in the database as at 
that time way up here many seconds earlier. Whereas this lazy loading query here for customer, that's actually running as a different transaction, and this will see data as at the statement start time, which is which is down here. Um, okay, so that's the difference that we need to think about when we're talking about lazy loading um, and transaction isolation levels. Now, the good thing is that with eBeam, we're, we're making it easy to go from you know lazy to eager fetching, if you like. And I guess there's a couple of little things I will talk about. Um, but uh, let's, let's, let's not worry about that. Let's actually now have a look at Eclipse Link. So just to go back to the slide, um, summarize. At read committed isolation level, we just don't need to worry about it or think about it. Um, lazy loading will invoke with a different transaction, but it actually doesn't matter. If we go and bump up uh, this, the isolation level to higher isolation levels, then we need to think about it. Then we need to think, do I want to get this uh, eagerly uh, in that transaction and have it um, transactionally read consistent? Or am I allowing it to be lazily invoked after the, that initial transaction and then it's a, it's at a different different read consistency. So that's the thing that you need to decide. So now let's have a look at uh, Eclipse Link. Which <coughs> so Eclipse Link here, we've got a entity manager and we've got a JPA query, find orders, uh, max 10. We've got some Eclipse Link hints here for batch fetching of the details and shipments. And then we've got an entity manager close. And after the entity manager close, we're actually going to effectively invoke lazy loading here by doing the same stuff that we were doing before. And what we'll see is that Eclipse Link does invoke lazy loading, uh, just like eBeam. Um, and obviously, if we were here using Hibernate, Hibernate would actually throw the lazy initialization exception at this point. So let's run this. So we're getting the same result, which is good. So we've got order T7, uh, detail lines. If we scroll up a bit. So what we've got here is the, the message that uh, the entity manager is closed, but we've got lazy loading being invoked after that. I think this is just a delay as well. So here we've got um, an initial query, and then some lazy loading queries for, uh, just full scroll across, Rob. Um, customer, uh, where ID is in, and then we've got a lazy loading for order detail, which is batch lazy loading, and shipments, which is batch lazy loading. If we scroll down here, we don't have batch lazy loading on customer. We didn't have that hint, and so we got a, you know, effectively an M plus one scenario going on here, as opposed to batch lazy loading here. Um, now, there's a couple of little things I'm wanting to point out, and then there's sort of a of uh, larger things to point out. So uh, the first one is that eBeam by default has batch lazy loading. Um, so we didn't have to hint or anything. We just got batch default of 10 for lazy loading, batch size of 10. The other thing that's a little bit more subtle is that um, when we look at the in clauses here, we've got an order detail and we'll actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven bind values because there were seven orders. But with eBeam it's a little bit different. So if we have a look here, um, eBeam query, subtly different. And we actually have got some padding going on. So what eBeam's doing, and the reason why we're doing the padding is because of two things. One, we want to get a better hit ratio on our client side prepared statement. So that's JDBC prepared statement. And on the server side, on the database server, database uh, is got query execution plans for SQL statements. And if we have less variation, we'll get a higher hit ratio on that server side uh, prepared statement query ex for query execution plans. So if we don't do that, then we'll get effectively more what's uh, called hard parsing in the database. 
So that's why Ebin's doing this slightly interesting thing here where we've got uh, seven bind values, but we pad it out by adding those three and adding you know, duplicating the first one. Um, similarly here, we're padding out. We've got two, we're padding out to five. So Ebin will pad these uh, in clauses for one, five, 10, 20, and 50, and 100. Um, so if we go back to Eclipse Link and J um, Hibernate's the same when it uses its batch lazy loading, it doesn't do that. So that's a slight disappointment. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is do something which is what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fetch join here. Now, the reason why I'm going to do that is because you might think that that's sort of the equivalent of lazy loading, but effectively we're getting a sem semantically different query because we've got max results here. So this is actually something you need to be really careful of. If I run this query, we won't probably get what you expect unless you've done this before. <laughs> Okay, so we ran the query and we got borderline two and borderline one and borderline one was repeated, border one repeated, border one repeated. Okay, so this is one of those quirks of JPQL. We've done a, a fetch to a one to many, so we probably need to distinct it again. So this is JPQL distinct. However, we still aren't going to get what think you would expect, certainly what I would expect. So now we've got order two and order one. Okay, so we've actually got seven orders. Uh, we did, you know, a max of 10 and now we've got two orders. And the reason is because uh, Eclipse Link is interpreting that max as a relational. Um, if we have a look at the query and the bind values, at it. So what we've got is a query against order uh, and then a join, a left join to our many which is order details and then we've got this limit offset which is a, a relational limit offset. Okay. So we get 10 rows but of course we're joining to a many and our order, this ha order happens to have nine rows, but it could have many more than nine, it could have a hundred, um, it could have five. So what we get is a somewhat arbitrary result. We happen to get two orders, order one and order two. So <laughs> if we go here, there's a subtle thing here where max results for Eclipse Link is treated as a relational max 10 and we're fetching to a many so actually we don't know how many orders we're going to get back okay so that's subtle we can't just go add that and go well this is eager fetching if we have max results here um, it's possibly not the result you're after if we if we you know make it worse oh, it won't make it worse let's do two left joins and we'll get a cartesian quark Okay, so this is probably going to maybe help. So now we only get one order, um, and we get you know some the order lines for that. And the reason is because um, we've generated a Cartesian product, a SQL Cartesian product, right? So just take that off. So we've got our a query against orders, and then we've left join to many details, and we're left joining to many shipments. So we've got too many's, and therefore we have this Cartesian product. So if we run that, we've got order one, and we've got you know um, interesting results. So if we if we bang this up a lot, um, you'll see the Cartesian product. You'll see repeating uh, rows here. 
right? So it's a rather interesting result, okay? So uh, the, the takeout here is that you want to be really careful of interpreting a left fetch join as an eager fetch. It pretty much doesn't work as you'd expect when you have max results because Eclipse Link is interpreting the max results as a relation of max results, row limiting, and we're joining one to many's. Uh, Hibernate does something different. It actually ignores max results, uh, does the full query and does client side paging. So both implementations are pretty interesting. Uh, anyway, let's leave it at that. Okay, uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, let's go back to our presentation. Uh, that was it really. Um, lazy loading beyond the context. Yes, eBean allows it when you're using it with eBean. Oops, when you're using it with eBean, the thing to remember, whoa, the thing to remember is that if you bump up the isolation level to serializable, then you need to think about the difference between you know, transaction level read consistency and statement level read consistency. What you want to fetch eagerly, what you want to fetch lazily. Okay, that's it. Cheers.